there art nerds i've got another paint with me watercolor tutorial for you guys today today we are watercolor painting these gentle creatures if you're one of my patrons on a patreon i have a printable line art for you guys so that you can paint along and if you're curious about the materials that i'm using make sure you check the description below because i'll have everything listed out for you guys as well as linked out and i'm also going to link out some of my favorite watercolor tutorials. So grab your paints, grab your brushes, and let's get painting. I'm starting today with an already stretched watercolor illustration and I want to start by painting in the background. I'm keeping it very simple. We're starting with ultramarine blue mixed with a little bit of cobalt blue and I really want to capture kind of the warm blue that you can get on certain sunny days. I also want to capture the granulation so I'm working with a fairly loose mix on Stonehenge cold press cotton rag watercolor paper so this is a paper that has a lot of texture to it and it also can take a lot of water so after the first layer dried I want to create kind of a gradient effect so I'm applying my second layer and I'm kind of working in the smaller areas first actually now that I'm watching myself paint I think I'm just going ahead and doing a full-on second layer I think the first layer might have been a little bit too streaky and this is gonna help minimize how noticeable the streaks are. Now I am painting in Southeast Louisiana and I have my air conditioner on which helps with those crazy dry times. So once that's had a chance to dry, I'm going to start doing kind of the under glaze on our roses. I'm painting some hot pink wild roses today and I am using a little bit of our ultramarine blue. I've kind of sequestered it out in a little sauce dish and I'm underpainting it so that we can already start establishing the shadows and we can kind of tie everything together by having this unifying underpainting color. I've started this painting with some quills. You guys might recognize these. I'm using the Diane W quills and these are actually art secret quills. I found these on Amazon, but they're also available on AliExpress. And I recently did a big video where I reviewed and talked about a bunch of them. So if you're on the market for good watercolor brushes, I hope you guys will check that one out. I'm also painting the kind of lacy Swiss dot overlay for her dress. And then I dabbed up the excess because it was a little bit darker than I wanted. So now I'm finally doing that gradient color. So I have a thicker mix of our ultramarine blue and I blended it out with a little bit of clean water. Unfortunately, the transi transition was a little bit sharper than I wanted, a little bit more noticeable than I was looking for. So I let that dry and now I'm going in and doing another layer and kind of letting that blend out. Now, I wanna disclose that I ended up overworking this bottom area that you guys see me working on right now too much, and the ultramarine blue ended up kind of chalky. I did too many layers with it, and I just kinda accidentally killed the color. So, if possible, don't overwork it as much as I did. It ended up kinda overworked though because I was trying to clean up an area. So to start our flowers, I'm starting with a warmish yellow. I believe it's New Gamboge. And then I use clean water to encourage it to blend out. So I wanted to use more of the colors in my Mega palette here. So I'm using some of the PWC more opaque pastel pinks for this. You can do also use a really watered down compose rose or rose matter for this. Now I'm pointing this out because since it is pastel, it is slightly opaque. It does obscure the line art somewhat. I'm going to re-ink this piece at the end of the tutorial, but if you don't feel like re-inking, I would recommend you work with more transparent colors from the get-go. They're less likely to make your line art look muddy. So you guys can see I'm going flower by flower. Then I'm adding in a slightly darker pink while it's still wet. And then I'm adding in, I think it's Compose Rose while that's still wet. And it's all kind of bleeding towards the center of the flowers. 
another little heads up here, but if you ever want to see this written out as a blog post and you're one of my patrons, let me know and I'll write it up for you guys and share it as a patron only. Um, I used to do this on the Natto Soup Studio blog and as I've mentioned many times, Blogger has started to rot, but it's a service that I'm happy to do for my patrons. Just let me know if there's ever a tutorial that you'd like to see handled in a different way because we all learn differently and I know a lot of people work better from static photos and written descriptions. I know that's easier for me to follow than videos. So I'm kind of working the roses a bit more. I'm adding in some more water, dipping in some warmer yellow orange towards the center and encouraging it to just kind of diffuse out. And once those have had a bit more of a chance to dry, I'm going in with our ultramarine blue and I've added a little bit of Payne's gray and I'm using this as the grise on the rest of the painting, particularly on the rabbit, because I feel like using some of these very common colors in this illustration as the underpainting will not only help us establish the shadows, but it's also going to hopefully tie everything together a little bit more and make it feel like it's all kind of taking place in the same area. Recently, I picked up a new color, at least new to me, Winsor Newton's Rose Door, and it is this beautiful color that's really helpful for adding just a little bit of warmth to flesh area. So like, for example, you guys will see me use it in a minute to kind of start coloring the nose on the rabbit. It's a really beautiful color. It's a little bit of a more expensive color, but it's really useful for the kind of watercolor that I like to do where I'm painting a lot of animals and a lot of people. And it's important to kind of capture that liveliness. And it works well with a variety of skin tones as well, which is just always nice to find. So I did another layer of ultramarine blue on her dress. That is going to be a transparent layer. And as I'm working on this, I'm kind of working back and forth between starting the rabbit and working on the roses. So now I'm using a little bit more of that ultramarine blue because I felt like I'd lost a lot of the shadows considering how opaque these pinks are. Now, if you want kind of that luminous color that we can get with watercolor, working with these more opaque watercolors so early on is not really the best idea. Opaque watercolors definitely have their place and I do use them from time to time, but working with them as thickly as I seem to have done here and as early on, as I did really killed all the work that I did establishing those shadows early on. Now that doesn't make it a total waste. It can be useful just as a reference to yourself where you're going to want to place the shadows later or figuring out your light source. So I also wanted to add some more hot pink to the edges of the roses. So I'm using some water and then I am dabbing in some more of that middle opaque pink and then I'm dabbing in some more of the Magello compost rose and I really enjoy how opaque watercolors and transparent watercolors can blend on the paper and the kind of interesting color effects that we're able to get sometimes with those kinds of blends and I'm going to do this for all of the roses in the ring. I also want to disclose that this painting took about four days for me to paint. That's not including the inking. That's not including the original sketch. We're just talking about the painting and adding watercolor pencils, re-inking, and gouache. I know it says 37 minutes. This has been time-lapsed several times over, and that can make it kind of challenging to narrate everything step by step. But don't worry, I've got your back. I've got some great watercolor tutorial playlists that are in more depth, whether you want to learn how to paint flowers, or you want to learn how to paint people, or you just want to learn the basics of watercolor. So make sure you check that description because I've got you. So now I want to start on the rabbit and I am referencing pet rabbits for this. And I have this really cute ginger colored rabbit pulled up. And that's what I'm kind of aiming for here is kind of gingery tones. Maybe I'm inspired by Dax, my mom's cat, but I thought that would just be really cute and a little bit more unusual in terms of domesticated rabbits. You know, we think of orange ginger cats, but we don't necessarily think of orange ginger bunnies. <laughs> 
I'm also adding in a little bit more opaque. I think it's like a uh, yellow green towards the center. And I am kind of trying to clean up the edges and add some, just some definition to the edges of the petals on the roses. I spend a lot of time on this one, painting and repainting those wild, wild roses, trying to get them just right. I wanted to capture both kind of a sweet, springtime feeling but also with a little bit of wildness and I really love the original wild versions of flowers that we've domesticated they're just they just speak to me and wild roses are just so much hardier than their cultivated counterparts and they are just such a wonderful pollinator for or source of food for bees and they're a plant that I can't kill so that makes me partial to them. I'm also using our compost rose so that's a darker almost like a magenta not quite a hot pink it's a little bit more light fast than say an opera rose which would have been such a fun color to use for this but so very light fast. I'm kind of reworking it back into the edges, working into the crinkles and the creases just to give some more definition to these roses. Once that initial sort of fill layer on our rabbit has dried, now we can start utilizing our brush, working with a smaller brush and really relying on the brushwork to kind of give the implication of fur. And when I'm thinking about painting fur, I'm thinking about like with most of my watercolor stuff, we're working from large forms to smaller forms. So we're thinking of larger masses of fur in maybe lighter colors. And then we're working our way smaller and more saturated. And we may start to work in some of the accent colors depending on the animal's fur coat. Like if they have an agouti coat um, like squirrels have where there's like lots of different colors there, we might wanna start working in some of those additional colors as we kind of progress with the illustration. So for the fur on this one, I'm pretty much letting it dry before I move on to a smaller brush and a more saturated mix of our sort of ginger color. This is kind of a companion piece to the hold on tight illustration that I did. These are both year of the rabbit illustrations, but kind of depicting different aspects of rabbit. So if you enjoy animal art or if you like rabbits and bunnies, I hope you guys will check out my hang on tight watercolor illustration as well. So to start adding more definition to our rabbit and to make it appear like it's behind these roses, so like everything is kind of taking place in the same space, I'm still working with our ultramarine and Payne's gray mix, but I've added more Payne's gray and I may have added just a little bit more neutral tint. You guys can see that here. I really like using these little sauce dishes. I get them at the Asian market. They are great for watercolor washes or larger mixes of watercolor. And they're also very affordable. So if you're looking for good ceramic palettes on the cheap, make sure you check out your Dollar Tree, make sure you check out your Goodwill, and make sure you check out your local Asian market because all of those can be good sources for very affordable watercolor palettes. <laughs> 
So now that I've got the roses basically painted in, I'm going to start working on the foliage around it. And I am using a phthalo blue, I think it's Holbein's phthalo blue, to just start blocking it in. Because for these, I really want it to be an optical blend of yellow over blue so that we get kind of that bright fresh color and I also know that for the edges of the leaves I want to capture kind of the beautiful rust color that you get on the edges of some rose leaves so I want to make sure that I'm able to capture that and I'm going to demonstrate how I do that in just a little bit. So I'm a little bit tacky and I think I need to add dew drops to everything. So I'm trying to lift the dew drops out of the roses first by applying a drop of water, letting it sit and then scrubbing it up just a little bit, but it doesn't want to lift or at least not noticeably. So I let that dry and then I go in with just a little bit of our ultramarine blue and I basically paint a semicircle where the dew drop would be. And that's going to be kind of the shadow on our dew drop. So there's a few different ways to paint dew drops. You can do lift out techniques, you can do masking techniques, or you can just start adding in the shadows early on and then add like a white gouache highlight a little bit later on. I'm using both the masking fluid technique and the <laughs> combination attempt at a lift out slash just paint your shadow for your dewdrop and hope for the best and uh, you guys should let me know in the comments which method you like better so I want this girl to have a darker skin tone so to achieve that I'm going to start by under painting the blush as well as the shadow on her skin so for the blush I started out with that rose door that I mentioned earlier and then I've also added carmine to my palette recently and I really like how carmine it's kind of like a almost like a blood red and it works really beautifully as a blush in a lot of applications, especially for darker skin tones. So I painted her face, her arm and her hand. I let that dry. And now I'm going to do the first layer for her dress, because remember, I want some of those areas to be more translucent, the sleeve and then the neckline is going to be translucent. So it's important that I establish the skin tone underneath it paint a couple layers of the purple and then kind of work it from there. And to get this purple mix, I believe I mixed, I want to say hot pink, I want to say opera rose with ultramarine blue to get this kind of beautiful purple. I was hoping for a little bit more granulation out of it, but it's a really pretty vibrant color and it just really works well with this illustration. So I've added another layer of our phthalo blue. And while that's drying, I'm also adding the Swiss dot pattern to the lace overlays on her dress. And I'm doing that using masking fluid. That's gonna, you know, mask it out so we can paint our layers on top of it. So now you can kind of see how I am building up the translucency of the sleeves. I did a layer of the skin tone on top of it so that, like you can see the skin through the fabric. Now, if you're looking for skin tone mixing and painting tutorials, I've got a few of them. I'll link them for you guys down in the description. So make sure you check them out because this thing is moving so fast that it's kind of hard for me to narrate everything. So I have to kind of pick and choose what topics I want to talk about more. But if there's ever a topic that you'd like to see me talk about in more depth, please let me know. You can either let me know in my art centric discord server, the paint box, or you can comment it. But if you want to make sure I see it, make sure you hit me up in the paint box. I'll make sure to link the server in the description for you guys. So check that description. So at this point, I'm kind of working on developing three things, her skin tone, her dress, and the leaves. And we're still working with the phthalo blue, still kind of building up those shadows because I'm letting the color dry and then kind of seeing how I feel about it. I'm also blending it out with some clean water so that it's not as harsh all over the place. I'm not blending it out everywhere, but more like kind of towards the light source. I'm blending it out a little bit more so that we get kind of a softer transition.
While the masking fluid is still on the dress, I'm going to go ahead and add kind of a dot of shadow underneath each masking fluid circle. And that's going to give, if you've ever looked at Swiss dot fabric, it's got like an opaque white dot or whatever color the fabric is dot. And that can cast a shadow on the lighter fabric surrounding it. So one of the ways that I like to convey this is by doing the technique that I showed you guys just now. So for the stems, I'm using some Winsor Newton Green Gold. It's a beautiful color. I happen to really love these sort of like sharp, bright, springy green golds. I've also mixed in some sap green. And then I'm using Bismuth Yellow to glaze on top of our Thalo Blue. And I'm dipping in a little bit of our, I think I'm dipping in the Carmine, but it might be Alizarin Crimson here. So I'm not doing it like uniformly on the edges, just kind of here and there to add some interest. And then as I need to, I'm going to reinforce it later on. And I'm working basically leaf by leaf. And if two leaves are adjacent, then I will work on another area and come back to it because I want to control the wet into wet. And that's a way to control it is to just kind of skip around on your illustration rather than doing two leaves or two whatever that are adjacent to each other. So for this one, I kind of held off on doing her hair for a little while. I was going to kind of change the hair color depending on the needs of the illustration. But I decided to go with a really rich dark brown that kind of trends towards black. So I'm mainly working with sepia and with Van Dyke brown as well as with black. And then while that's drying, I'm going to add in more color to the dress, the main body of the dress itself. And I'm using dioxine purple for this and I am blending it out with clean water. Sometimes it's more effective than others when you've got these little bitty areas and you're trying to work around them and do kind of a clean blend that makes the areas look like they're actually connected behind what you're painting. It can be a little bit more challenging. Sometimes that works a little bit better than others. So while that's drying, I am getting all up in the camera, but I'm also adding some red to the rose thorns and the vines, the bramble, the rose bramble, that's kind of framing this illustration just to kind of tie in with the leaves themselves. And as with pretty much always, I am heavily referencing wild roses while I'm painting this so that I know what I'm looking for and I know what I'm trying to convey rather than trying to work on my admittedly somewhat faulty ADHD person short-term memory. At this point, I have everything basically blocked in. I kind of know where all this is going. I know what colors everything's going to be. So at this point, it's really just kind of further refining the details, further adding light and contrast and shadow and building up those colors. And for her hair, I really wanted it to have like a nice curly texture. So I'm using kind of a little springing motion with the brush. So the leaves dried a little bit more desaturated than I was really hoping for. So I'm going in with another layer of our bismuth yellow and just kind of glazing it on top. So one of the reasons I mentioned how many days or how long I spend on an illustration is because watercolor takes time to dry and there's certain techniques like certain glazes that you can only really successfully execute 
if it's dry and has had a chance to dry like overnight and that kind of reduces the likelihood of the colors reactivating unless you want them to reactivate so it's kind of hard to capture those dry times for you guys since like literally no one wants to just sit around and watch paint dry and often i will just let it dry out overnight or i'll go for a walk um, or I'll step away for several hours and do other things. But I want to point it out because I do feel like since the internet kind of privileges time-lapse art, especially heavily time-lapsed art, I think it's important to mention how long it took to paint something or how long it took for something to dry because that's really important information to know. And if you're coming into watercolor and you've never painted before, you may not realize that I'm painting on top of a dry illustration if you're just watching the time lapse without any of the relevant context. So I do think it's pretty important to point out. So for some of the leaves, I decided to use our olive green and sap green mix just to make them a little bit greener and a little bit warmer and just kind of add some variety in there. There's also some leaves that I decided needed a little bit more of our carmine red. So I either am working wet into wet or I am kind of dabbing it on and then working it, making it move a little bit with a clean brush of just water. Also added another layer to our rabbit, continuing to build up that fur texture and continuing to build up the fur color. So as I continue to refine details, I am working smaller, I am working tighter, I am working with thicker mixes of paint, and I'm working with smaller watercolor brushes. So basically my mantra for watercolor is we start big and loose and we work tighter as we go. You don't want to start too tight and too small because you can end up with a really scrubby looking watercolor illustration. It also will take a really long time to paint. I really do recommend you work with a brush that's slightly larger than you think you'll be comfortable with and then work smaller from there because if you start out too small you're also gonna like all the repetitive strain on your wrist is gonna like wreck your wrist early whereas if you're working with a larger brush you're working a little bit looser and you can cover a larger area faster so it's just good advice for painting longevity. this point those clips are more getting in the way than they're actually helping I don't I'm not really going to be painting any large areas with any really loose washes of water so it's unlikely that the paper itself is going to buckle a whole lot it's also my chance to remove the masking fluid so I'm using a masking fluid frisket to do that and I still have some painting to do on the dewdrops, so I'm going to go ahead and start painting them in yellow like they're kind of capturing the light and reflecting it directly onto the leaf and then I paint in kind of a circle of slightly darker color it can either be you know your sap green or it can be phthalo blue or it could be both um, I'm also going to remove the dots off of her dress for the Swiss dot effect and I am kind of just lightly glazing a bit of our original dress purple on top of it so that it's not as stark and noticeable because I something I've noticed that I struggle with when it comes to masking fluid is that it can leave too harsh a mark on the paper and it can become really noticeable that I'd use masking fluid. So I do try to kind of go back and paint around it and paint over it and just kind of make it fit with the rest of the painting. So I mentioned to you guys earlier that all these opaque paints can really kind of obscure your line art and they can make what you're doing look muddy. Also, I have all these dew drops that I just kind of freehanded in. So I, once this has dried, I'm going back over it with the same 
pen that I used to ink it in the first place. That would be a Sakura Pigma FB. And this is a water safe pigment based pen that is just really nice to use for watercolor if you like to do the kind of watercolor illustration that I like to do. And I'm just using it to re-ink the areas that need it. And basically that's areas that have lost clarity and would benefit from a little bit of extra ink to kind of clean things up or areas that need more contrast because I'd kind of noticed over the years of painting on top of ink illustrations is that a lot of them started to look kind of flat and I realized it's because I'd basically like wiped out all the contrast by painting on top of the black and all those layers of watercolor kind of obscuring and muddying the line art and re-inking it just sporadically will add some of that contrast back and it kind of adds some of that vibrancy and it adds some clarity back to the illustration. Now another reason I point out how long I spend on illustrations is so that you guys can understand the concept of fresh eyes. Often I'll step away for a while and come back to it and see some areas that I need to rework and I'll know how to rework them. So taking a break and stepping away from it not only gives it a chance to dry, it gives the paper to a chance to tighten up, the pigments a chance to settle, and the colors a chance to do what they're going to do, but it also gives my brain a chance to reset and it allows me to look at my work critically with an eye towards improvement. So I want to point out that for those sleeves, in order to give the appearance of translucency, I added some additional layers of brown and then I blended them out with water. I basically did that where there would have been more shadow so the sleeves would be a little bit darker. So kind of the back of the upper arm as well as the elbow. Also have been adding some more layers of paint to her face because it wasn't as dark as I really wanted. I also tried something new to me here. I used a little bit of opaque watercolor. It wasn't gouache. It was um, Jean Brilliant and I just kind of added some rim light lighting to the face. So with lighter skin tones, I might use opaque white for that, but I find that on darker skin tones, it's, it's too blue and it just kind of deadens the face. But, and you guys can actually see the Jean Brilliant, it's all the way to the left in my palette there. That was just the right color to add just a little bit of rim light, like the light is hitting her cheek and to kind of create some contrast between the edge of her cheek and her hair because they were kind of getting lost into each other and that's something that I found is really helpful and one of the reasons I like to use watercolor pencils towards the end of my watercolor illustrations is that if you have two dark colored things next to each other adding a little bit of rim light on the edge of one will just give you enough contrast that people can see what the object is and it doesn't just kind of blur into the other object sometimes you want that um, sometimes you want to create kind of a mystical feeling or a foggy feeling, but I'm not talking about those instances. I'm talking about when <laughs> the face gets lost in the hair and you don't want that. A little bit of rim lighting can be really helpful. I also really like using watercolor pencils to adjust contrast or to adjust the color like I'm doing here. I'm adding some yellow. And what's really nice about this is you can blend it out with water so you can kind of soften that transition. Something else that's really nice about watercolor pencils is you hit a point with watercolor where you know you can't do any more layers of watercolor and get what you want but you can switch to watercolor pencils and use that to adjust the colors to adjust the contrast to lighten things to darken things and it's not going to turn to mud it's not going to reactivate all the colors underneath it So once I've painted, once I have re-inked, once I've used my watercolor pencils, the not the B in that order, by the way, it is time for the white gouache. And I'm going to use this to add my final highlights to this. Now I've been on the lookout for a warmer version of white gouache um, because like I mentioned earlier, it can kind of deaden things. I do have titanium buff and that has its place, but that is also 
to gray. And I know there are some acrylic washes that would work well for what I'm like the in terms of color for what I'm looking for, but I want a real gouache in that. So with real gouache, you can reactivate it with water and kind of blend it out or lift it out. Whereas with acrylic gouache, once it's dried, it is on there. And I am not looking for that kind of commitment. Thank you. I've been ex exploring with different options from Shinhan Pass to just different gouaches, and I haven't quite found what I'm looking for. So if you know of a company that makes kind of an antique white or a warmer white gouache, please let me know. So once we have finished everything and our illustration has had a chance to dry fully, it's time to remove the blue tape. And I have a really simple method for this. I just pull away from the illustration at a 90 degree angle. I've tried using hair dryers. I've tried using other tapes and the 3M blue painters tape, I've been using it for over a decade now. <laughs> it works really well. And by pulling away at a 90 degree angle, even if it tears a little bit, it's not gonna tear into your illustration. It's just going to tear the edges, which if you want to, you could cut those off. And there we have it, another finished watercolor illustration. Thank you guys so much for painting with me today. A reminder that if you're one of my patrons on Patreon, I have shared the line art with you guys. Please feel free to print it out and color along. And if you do color it, I would love to see it. So tag me at Natto Soup. If you're not one of my patrons, what are you waiting for? You can join me today and get access to this printable line art and be painting with me in like no time. I had a lot of fun not only painting this illustration, but sharing the process with you guys. And if you guys ever have any specific questions that you'd like to see demonstrated in more depth, feel free to let me know either in the comments or by reaching out to me on my art centric discord server, the paint box. Remember I have everything linked for you guys down in the description below. So make sure you check down there before you say goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a big old like that'll let YouTube know to show this video to more people. And if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. I'm Becca Hilburn. I'm a comic artist and illustrator. And it would mean the world to me if you took a minute to hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification and join us on our watercolor journey. I hope you guys had as much fun watching this as I had sharing it with you guys. And I look forward to sharing another watercolor tutorial with you guys in the near future. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see you guys again soon. Huge, huge thank you to my amazing patrons on Patreon because it is their support here on the channel that helps me do what I do here. So thank you guys so much.